Hey guys, here we are in the third round of the Oleksandr versus Unieski Gonzalez fight. Uh, so the first two rounds have gone, you know, definitely in favor of Oleksandr's, uh, in, in favor of Oleksandr. He's been able to bait punches. Uh, he's been able to take advantage of Unieski's defense by priming him to set it up. Um, you know, just uh, probing to figure out where he's going to punch, uh, showing that he's he's got a great understanding of boxing. Um, and we're going to move into the third and the, spoiler alert, the final round, and I'll kind of get to talk about uh, what goes on in here um, as he really starts to put it on him. Um, but there is there is something, like a little twist in the round that I'm not sure anybody caught. I don't know if they said it in the, um, if the commenters noticed it. Um, but because I didn't, I didn't listen to any of the highlights or listen to the the end of the fight. Because I, like I said, I was in the restroom during the time, and I don't care to do it now. But we'll get into the fight. And uh, here you go. What, he starts off uh, again with the high guard, right? Getting him to bring his his gloves up, but he doesn't. You know, Unieski's like, oh man, he keeps getting me with that. So he kind of ducks down, just goes in with the jab. And uh, it's kind of what Alexander's waiting for, right? So he just takes a step back, catches him with the. Uh, the one two, I think that punch lands, and then smart defense right here, kind of throws it like a, a probing hook, you know, kind of like a, to control him, to make him think that he's still punching, uh, but he only does that so that he can step off to the right. Uh, really smart boxing. Now the same thing, jabbing, moving, and Unieski like he, he really needs to be set before he punches. You know, you see it right here, sets. And then, uh, and then he can throw that punch. And um, Alexander kind of telegraphs it, you know, this in the same way when he waits for him to catch him in the jab. But he has a responsible defense, uh, and he's able to catch it. Um, again, jabbing. And one interesting thing to note is um, look at where Unieski's left hand is right now. Like when he opens up to throw that punch, it's like he's doing a breaststroke. You know, his hands, like, they really come apart. And it shows that he can't, he kind of doesn't have, like, the greatest uh, um, combination punching strategy, or ability, rather. Um, I think even with this, with that jab, you can see his, his right hand come off away from his, um, away from his guard. Uh, so that he can't even really set off a one-two. You see it as it pops out. Uh, and it, that just stops him from being able to, to throw good punches. And that's the kind of stuff that makes, um, again, uh, before I, I'll finish that thought, that kind of makes how you grade fighters, right? Like, Unieski has, like, a, a lot of smarts and stuff, but your technique, you know, that's when you go from, like, being a C-level fighter uh, to, like, kind of in the Ds, you know, like, so, like, C-, minus, right? So he's got skills, but you give him a C- minus because his technique isn't there. And, some of the things that other fighters can do can really exploit that kind of stuff, like Alexander with his movement. But anyway, uh, shows him the jab, gets him to like bring his high guard up, keeps it up, and then catches him with a couple shots while still moving. You know that left hook didn't really have anything on it. Uh, right there again. Whoops, a little bit too far. Catches the overhand right. Really smart. Uh, and Unieski makes an adjustment about right here. See right here, he gets him right as he's about to be have the ring cut off on him. Alexander tries to stick him with the jab. He gets his right hand guard to catch the right hand, but Unieski goes to the body. That's pretty smart. So then he goes to control his head and pull him into that um, that uppercut. I think he thought he was going to change head slots, uh, but he catches him with this great left hook right here. And look how he turns away from other punches, so Unieski can't catch him. Just really great footwork from this guy. Boom. And then, oh, uh, right there. So he comes up with his head. Really unfortunate for for Gonzalez right there. Uh, it doesn't hurt him or anything, but we'll see later. Oh, man, that was just beautiful. Shows him the jab, steps back, gets him to jab. And look at how far away uh, Unieski's glove is when he kind of does that, how he gets all his elbow really wide, and he can't even throw a punch in time. Winds up just eating a big right that Alexander just walked him into. Just brilliant. Uh, and then ties him up, you know. 
Unieski's kind of like, oh, you know, this follow him around isn't working, so he's kind of trying to go for broke a little bit. Some good stuff there, throws a right. And then as he's throwing it, you know, not a lot of power, but he steps off to his side, really smart. Catches him with the jab, boom, and it just, I don't think uh, Gonzalez was really ready for that one. That was a big jab too, man. He's kind of uh, a little dazed. I think that right hand hurt him. And look at that, some really good stuff here. Catches him with the hook kinda, and then he moves his head. Look at his movement though. He's gonna throw this right hand, dip down, so he would miss the right hand when he counters throws a left hook, and then puts his head all the way back on his right leg, and then just pivots out. Just really smart boxing. Let's just kind of watch that again. So much going on. Boom, throws that right hand. And now he could have pivoted out this way um, and not thrown another punch and been safe as well, but just great. And then, unfortunately, this is what happens. Um, misses the right hand, but then look at as his head goes down. You see Unieski's head right there, and he just totally headbutts him in the chin. And Unieski's falling over. I think he was already hurt. I think he was already hurt from that right hand. As you notice, his footwork was a little lacking for the last like you know 30 seconds or whatever. But what are you gonna do? You know, are you gonna stop fighting? Are you gonna yell at the ref? Hey guys, that was a headbutt, man. It's not gonna get you anywhere, but you know you're gonna lose your breath. You know, the referee's not going to just be like, oh, let's watch tape. Let's figure that out. There you go. And I wanted to, oh, I forgot to point it out before, but look at this jab. You know, it's a hard jab, but it's not a, it's not a, um, like a, a fast flicking, moving jab. He's jabbing like that, and he's keeping an eye on him. And then as soon as he gets him to react, boom, catches him with a counter again. Gets him to follow him, and then sharp stop, catch him with some more shots. Right there, that was nice. Makes him think it's going to be a jab and catches him with a hook as he's turning. Oh, man. And then, just so open, catches him with the uppercut. And here he is. Now this, hold him. That was brilliant right there. How he, uh, sorry, I'm like a little sloppy right now. But he holds his head to control him so that he can land the right hand. Oh, did he, did he even miss the right hand? I don't know. But he controls him right here. Really high level stuff. Oh, wow. Kind of looks like it misses. But really high level stuff from Alexander as he approaches the end of this fight. Unfortunately, it was predicated uh, by that headbutt, but. You know, he was going to get him eventually. And I think that's just uh, Gonzalez trying to hold, you know, because he's hurt and Alexander's not having any any of it. He still got the time that he needed without having to take a knee or anything. But, but now this is the part where I think this is where they stop it. But if you notice, like, while, um, while he's punching here, Unieski, look at where where his hands are while he's punching. There, he's wide open. Every time he throws like a left, he's open on the right. If he throws with the right, he's open on the left. Um, it's because he has poor defense and the way that he, he opens up when he throws his punches. He's so slow. Man, he is hurt. They should have just stopped the fight already. They shouldn't let this guy get hit anymore. He can't even stand up at all. And uh, right here, um, Alexander should be should be looking to control him, not just swinging like wild punches. You know, he's finding some of the shots, but they're not super clean because Unieski is moving. He should either go to the body or like probe, show him a left hand and then make him move and then hit him with the right. I mean, he, sh he shouldn't just be throwing punches because he's just wearing himself out too. And if he like somehow didn't stop him right here, like right there, that was beautiful. 
probing jab, control his head a little bit, and then throw that right hand. And then I think that's it. Catches him with the shot there too. But notice, as soon as he starts controlling him right there, probing with the jab to look for offense, he finds a way to, to stop him. I wonder if they, they do go and show the first knockdown. Let's kind of see. No. Oh yeah, that's it right there. Let's. I'm gonna turn the audio on and see. Oh, uh, they don't even. No. No, no mention of it being a headbutt. Uh, he, he was already kind of hurt, like I said, but that just kind of sealed it. And uh, Gonzalez was was pretty much done from there. But um, a lot of good stuff from, from Alexander here, uh, showing that he's a very capable fighter. He understands that there are better ways to set his punches up. Uh, his punches up on his opponent than just running in and throwing hard one-twos and hoping to put your opponent out of position. Um, better than just waiting for your opponent to make a mistake and countering him uh, because fights are long and boring like that. Uh, and, and another part of the reason why you don't want to do that is because that gives your opponent time to set up offense against you. And then the more you react to your opponent, the more you are exposing the flaws in your game. So if he throws a 1-2 and he sees how you block the 1-2, now he can, he can throw a 1, fake a 2, and then throw like an uppercut because maybe he saw, oh, you're really open for that. You know, and the more opportunity you give your opponent to look at you and how you react to punches, the more opportunities they have to set punches up on you. And no, notice how it's a really common thing for him to want to keep the distance and keep the space uh, until he's ready to set up offense, it's really common for him uh, and Vasily Lomachenko, well, like when he fought Nicholas Walters, refusing to let Nicholas Walters lead because it doesn't allow him at all to get a look at his defense or the possible holes in his defensive game um, or set up punches. Um, anyway, it was a it was a great a great fight from Alexander. He has some tightening up to do with his control of his opponent. Um, setting up offense, I think, was fantastic. And I would kind of give him, I think he's a, he's a solid B fighter right now. Um, I have like pretty harsh grading scale. You know, there aren't very many A-level fighters, um, um, in, in my opinion. You know, it's you got to be like, like nearly an all-time great, you know, to, um, to become an A-level fighter. Uh, and that has to be uh, predicated on more things than just like athleticism. You know, like, I don't want to get a lot of hate for this, but people say Roy Jones Jr. was one of the greatest fighters ever. You know, like, an all-time great. Like, his physical abilities? Man, will you ever see another Roy Jones Jr. like that? I don't know. But his actual, like, boxing skill? Uh, if he had that much boxing skill and that much boxing ability, he wouldn't be knocked out, like, the last, like, ten fights that he's had. You know, he just takes way too many punches. And he doesn't understand, you know, the most high-level aspects of, of defense, you know, and to move after punching or to control your opponent or, you know. Anyway, um, uh, that's all for this this uh, series on um, Alexander. Uh, I hope to see, like, great things from him in the future. Hopefully, I mean... Man, I would love to see him fight um, Adonis Stevenson, man. That would be such a great fight. But um, anyway, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to do I'm gonna do Canelo versus Liam Smith for my next fight in anticipation of the Chavez Jr. fight. Um, it's going to be harsh, though, guys. It's going to be harsh. Um, 
And then I wanted to do a little series on on grading fighters, how to tell, you know, for my, my particular grading scale, how to tell what level or class a fighter is um, uh, based on their skills, you know, athleticism and things aside, but based on their skills. Um, anyway, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think and let me know what you guys want to see. Thanks.